For SpaceX, each flight is not simply a task, it's also a valuable experience for them to do better in future missions. Musk and SpaceX have clearly shown this over the past seven months. The world witnessed a stunning display of power and precision when Ship 25 and Booster 9 soared into the sky with 33 Raptor 2 engines last weekend. But the real star of the show was the colossal Mechazilla, the robotic arm that made it all possible. Before its crucial role in the historic flight, Mechazilla had performed complex tasks. Lifting and lowering Ship 25, six times with remarkable accuracy. They learned a lot from the first Starship orbital test flight, thereby creating upgrades and changes to make strides in the recent Starship mission. That's why SpaceX is replicating this beast at Starbase Texas to prepare for bigger and bolder missions in the future. Those problems also seem to be quite serious and need to be resolved soon to help the next mission become more perfect and successful. So what are those problems in particular and how did they affect the Starship flight? Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode. We'll tell you everything you need to know about this amazing structure. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. St One of those changes is on the engine system, thanks to the great efforts of talented engineers it has brought the first positive results. No engine shut off or stopped working in the first minutes. This is really a new stride for SpaceX in the Starship project. However, there are still some problems that appeared with the engine after the separation process. Perhaps most of us still remember what happened during Starship's first integrated test flight back in April. One of the most prominent problems was the engine failure. Some engines were not activated after Starship lifted off and some others also stopped working during the flight. Those failures with the engine in the beginning caused a lot of impact on the flight's performance. However, those problems won't stop the progress of Elon Musk and SpaceX's talented engineers. The engine failure that occurred during the April flight was promptly investigated and resolved by SpaceX. The root causes of the failure were related to the manifold system, fuel pump system, hot air duct, hydraulic power unit system, and ignition system. These components either malfunctioned or failed to withstand the extreme conditions of the engine resulting in fuel leakage, engine shutdown, and incomplete ignition. In this section, we're going to focus on the manifold system, fuel pump system, and hot air duct. These parts were exposed to high levels of heat and pressure from the engine, which caused them to crack and leak fuel. This in turn led to the shutdown of one of the engines during flight. Additionally, the hydraulic power unit system and the igniter did not perform as expected, preventing some of the engines from being activated during liftoff. These were the main factors that contributed to the engine failure on the first flight. To address these issues, SpaceX made several improvements to its engine design. The manifold, fuel pump system, and hot air duct were reinforced with stronger materials and better insulation to prevent cracking and leakage. The hydraulic power unit system was replaced with a new electric TVC system that improved the control and reliability of the engines. The ignition system was also enhanced to ensure consistent and complete ignition of all engines. These improvements paid off in the last flight where all 33 engines of Super Heavy were successfully activated and operated smoothly. The sight of 33 engines working together in harmony was impressive and satisfying for the viewers, as well as a stark contrast to the previous flight. Moreover, the stable and sufficient thrust provided by the engines enabled a flawless flight up until the separation process. The first two minutes of the flight were beyond expectations and set the stage for the subsequent success of the separation and hot staging mechanisms. After the flight, the engine was one of the upgrades that received many compliments. It was also one of the factors SpaceX mentioned in the congratulatory tweet they posted on X after the flight. However, the problem with the engine seems to have not been completely resolved. The launch of Starship S-25 and Super Heavy B-9 was a spectacular event, but it also revealed some serious problems with the engines. After 2 minutes and 39 seconds of flight, only 3 of the 33 engines on Super Heavy were still firing, while the rest had shut down as planned. The separation of Starship and Super Heavy went smoothly and 2 seconds later, at 2 minutes and 50 seconds, 10 of the middle engines on Super Heavy reignited to join the three inner engines in controlling the descent. However, one of the middle engines failed to restart, and soon after, more than half of the engines also shut down. At 3 minutes and 18 seconds, all engines on Super Heavy were off, and 2 seconds later, it exploded in midair. This shows that the engine performance of Super Heavy was not stable after separation. 
the failure of one engine to restart and the subsequent shutdown of others prevented Super Heavy from executing its landing maneuver. This is a major issue because Starship is designed to reuse both. The plan for this flight was to land Super Heavy softly in the Gulf of Mexico, to test its landing capabilities, and prepare for the future use of the Mechazilla system. The gimbal motors that steered the engines are crucial for this purpose. However, both Super Heavy and Starship exploded before landing. This means that neither stage demonstrated its ability to land safely. Therefore, it'll take a while before we can witness the Mechazilla system catching the Super Heavy and Starship in midair. We may have to wait until at least the next flight to see that feat. The explosion problem was not only caused by engine issues, but also by other factors, such as fuel leaks. Nevertheless, the engine issues were one of the main reasons why Super Heavy's mission ended prematurely. For the time being up until the next flight, everything's going to be extremely busy for SpaceX's engineers. They'll need to find the causes of the problems with the engine. They'll need to help the engine operate as stable as possible, avoiding situations like the engine being shut down or unable to be activated. SpaceX also needs to pay attention to the gimbal engines, which play an extremely important role, as I've mentioned before, in controlling and landing stages. At least it needs to do well in the tasks of landing into the ocean before thinking about further goals like landing with the Mechazilla chopstick arms. Landing with Mechazilla would be a miracle, but it'll also pose many risks. The engines not only have to operate well and stably, but they also have to work perfectly and accurately to land in a small range, with little to no margin for error between the launch tower's chopsticks. Changes and improvements will even have to take place comprehensively. The Starbase Orbital Launch Tower, also known as Mechazilla, stood tall and proud at the Starbase launch pad after the latest Starship orbital flight attempt. Despite the fiery landing of the Starship, Mechazilla suffered minimal damage and was undergoing post launch inspections. The catching arm, which is designed to catch the Starship and the Super Heavy booster in mid air, looked ready for action. The only minor problem was the misalignment of the quick disconnect arm, which connects the Starship to the ground support equipment. This issue will likely be addressed soon. There are two main hypotheses for why the quick disconnect arm was not in its expected position. One is that the arm detached too late from the ship disrupting the delicate timing of the separation maneuver. The other is that the arm was subjected to excessive stresses from the 33 Raptor engines of the Super Heavy booster, which generated immense thrust during launch. A closer look at the photos reveals some worrying signs at the hydraulic piston connection point of the quick disconnect arm. This is where the arm attaches to the ship and it should have two pistons on each side. However, one of them seems to be missing, possibly broken off by the powerful exhaust plume of Booster 9's engines. The loss of this piston could have contributed to the misalignment of the arm. Such anomalies are not trivial in the field of space exploration, where every detail matters. SpaceX will need to investigate and resolve this issue before attempting another Starship flight. In fact, SpaceX performed a post-launch inspection of the QD to determine the cause and extent of the deviation. Fortunately, the deviation did not damage any critical parts of the QD, such as cables or fuel lines. This indicates that the electronic engine technology at the front end of the QD is working well. SpaceX will continue to fine-tune the QD and implement any necessary measures to prevent similar deviations in the future. This is undoubtedly a remarkable achievement for SpaceX's Stage Zero, both in terms of its own progress since seven months ago and in terms of its comparison with the NASA SLS. Launchpad The latter, which is part of NASA's Artemis mission to the moon, suffered significant damage during its first launch in 2022, such as blown off elevator doors and scorched grass. Moreover, the NASA SLS launch tower had a staggering cost of over a billion US dollars. While the SpaceX Mechazilla launch towers and the oil rig launch towers are estimated to cost less than $100 million each. With all those benefits, SpaceX has now begun building a second launch tower at Starbase. Starbase is preparing for a historic launch of Starship. They were usable rocket that SpaceX hopes will take humans to Mars one day. As part of the preparations, SpaceX has been building a second orbital launch tower to support the launch operations. The first piece of the second OLT arrived at Starbase four days after the launch, followed by the second and third pieces the next day. These pieces were shipped from Florida, where SpaceX had been working on a third OLT after completing two others. It's unclear if the entire third OLT will be transferred to Starbase or if some parts will remain in Florida. 
SpaceX still has a lot of work to do before the second OLT is ready, but the company is aiming for an ambitious schedule in 2024. By then, Starbase could have two fully functional OLTs and two stacked Starships ready to launch. This would be an amazing sight to witness and a testament to SpaceX's innovation and vision. The last time Starship flew was on April 20. Musk said then that SpaceX would launch Starship again in six to eight weeks. It ended up taking much longer than that for the vehicle to get off the ground of course. The FAA didn't grant a launch license until the 15th of November after it had wrapped up an investigation into the explosion and conducted a safety review as well as an environmental assessment. It's unclear when the agency's investigation into Saturday's flight will end. It just got underway after all. But given the progress SpaceX made with Flight 2 compared to Flight 1, it'd be surprising if there's another seven-month gap between Starship liftoffs. SpaceX certainly seems to be gearing up for an increased test flight cadence. There are three ships in final production in the Starbase High Bay, as can be seen from the highway. Musk said in a post Sunday on X.com. The future of SpaceX exploration is bright. Not only with the current engine, SpaceX also needs to make changes and improvements with the new engine versions, Raptor 3. This is the engine version SpaceX is developing and testing to apply to future prototypes. The experiences of Starship's two flights are the basis for SpaceX engineers to make appropriate changes to the future engine version. They'll probably need to speed up those tasks soon, because important deadlines are approaching. Although there are still some problems that have not been completely resolved, we still have to admit that everything is gradually getting better. And we can't forget to mention that to become the largest and most powerful aerospace company in the world, Musk and SpaceX have gone through many difficulties and challenges. Those challenges are even harsher now than before. But in the end, they overcame. So let's continue to put our trust in Musk and his company as we eagerly await the next crazy steps that they'll take on the road to Mars. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time. By the way, are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app? Talk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people by delivering items door to door. For more information, download the Talk Talk app here down below.